Hey folks, so this will probably be the last of my camp videos, but today um, we're going to talk about some scripture. And it's actually, it's come up quite a bit over the last uh, over the last couple of weeks. It's been thrown my way on more than one occasion. And it never should have been. Now I don't necessarily like using that word, those words should, could, and would. But sometimes they are important for us to, to understand and to hear. A while back I did a video about uh, Representative um, Cleaver and his opening prayer for the 170th, 117th Congress. Because in it, he made, uh, he made a few people anxious, angry, upset, sad, torn up, twisted around. He prayed in a way that a lot of Christians had a problem with. And because he's a Christian pastor, they, they, they released their venom. They released their vitriol on him. And uh, I personally, after listening to his prayer and watching him pray, I thought it was beautiful. I did that video. I tried to explain why what he said was okay. And because of that, one piece of scripture got thrown my way on numerous occasions. And this same piece of scripture, pretty much any time I've said something that bothered another believer, they've thrown this at me. And it comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. I'm just going to read it to you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesize in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Now, as a friend of mine on Facebook said very wisely, this scripture should terrify every believer. Every person of faith should read this scripture and quake in their boots. Now what I mean by that is, this is not scripture that's meant for you to use against another person. It's not scripture for us to use as a weapon against another person. Against another person of faith or another person who, who is without faith. This comes from the Beatitudes. Right, that beautiful section of scripture in the Gospel of Matthew that tells us how to live. That gives us an indication of where we should be placing our, our values, where we should be we, we, where we should be prioritizing our lives, how we should be introspective. All of these scriptures are meant for us to use to look at ourselves. They're a mirror for us to see ourselves in, for us to gauge ourselves with, for a, a standard that we can measure ourselves by. Jesus doesn't ask us to measure others. That job's done. That job's taken. Jesus offers us opportunities to take a look at ourselves, a good, solid, honest look at ourselves. This chapter starts off with, do not judge others. It continues with, ask, seek, and knock. It goes on to talk about false prophets. And even in that place of false prophets, it doesn't say, Here are the, here's how you measure a false prophet so that you can hold it against them. What it says is, you'll know the false, be on guard for the false prophets. Watch out for them because They've come to you like ferocious wolves. They are here to devour you. They are here to destroy you. They are here to put you down. They are not here to raise you up. But you'll know them by the fruit. You'll know them by the fruit that they produce. You will know them in their words. You will know them in your, their actions. You will know them in their mission. And then it comes to this one, it comes to this piece of scripture. Not everyone will enter into the gates of heaven. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Not every 
one who, who claims to have a faith, but rather those who do the will of my Father in heaven. The will of my Father in heaven. Doesn't matter if you're casting out demons. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, prophesizing. Did you do the will of my Father in heaven? First and foremost, that's the starting point. Did you do the will of my Father in heaven? Don't care if you were casting out demons. Did you do the will of my Father in heaven? Don't care if you were prophesying in my name. Did you do the will of my Father in heaven? Did you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body? Did you love your neighbor as yourself? Did you love your neighbor as Jesus loved us? There's the, there's the mirror. So it's great that you walk around. It's great that you walk around praising God and upholding his name and, and pointing your finger at others and making sure that, that people understand how they're supposed to believe and what they're supposed to believe and what they're supposed to say and how they're supposed to say it. It's wonderful that you're there to correct people in their, their life of faith. But did you... Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body? Or did you just proclaim it? Did you love your neighbor as yourself? Or did you just make sure everybody else knew that they were supposed to love their neighbor as themselves? This scripture has been weaponized to harm people. It's this scripture has been used to, to put people in their place. This scripture has been used by churches and by church leaders and by Christians alike to condemn, to confront, to challenge, to destroy others who, who don't believe things the way they believe it. Others who see things differently. Not badly. Differently. It has been used over and over and over again by people who demand that everyone else believe the same way that they do so that they don't have to challenge their own beliefs. If everybody believes the way I believe, I must be believing the right way. The scripture has been used to the detriment of our church. Like almost everything Jesus says in the New Testament, in the Gospels. He's speaking to you and I. he's, He's challenging you and I. These words of his, almost every dotted I and cross T are meant for us to take and absorb and reflect upon for ourselves. When he's speaking to the Pharisees, he's not telling us how to deal with Pharisees. He's telling us, there's times when you're a Pharisee and you need to listen. When he speaks to the people of power, when he speaks to the people who are vulnerable, when he, whoever it is that he's speaking to, we can take his words and internalize them and reflect on them to find our, to find our way, to find our best way through this life. But if you find yourself... But I would encourage you, when you find yourself, as I often do, seeing scripture and applying it against others, remember that's not our job. Our job is to read and to absorb and to be. Our job is not judge and jury. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that as you find your way in Scripture, as you find yourself coming across powerful verses like this, you will be bold enough and courageous enough to see yourself in them, that they may teach you And help you to grow into the best version of yourself. 
Amen.